morning, everybody. We're uh, here at the Woodward Dream Cruise. This is our uh, seventh annual webcast, which we're thrilled to be here with. In case you're wondering who it is, I'm really of no import, but the cameraman, Johnny Sarton. Now that's somebody you want to talk to. He's in the back. And more importantly, Ken Lingenfelter. Ken? Hey, John. How are you? Good. 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 Glad to be here with you. Me too. Yeah. It's, I, it's, we were just trying to figure out how many times have we done this, and it's, it's seven, and we're, number one, we're amazed that they let us do this, but number two, it's just, it's such a good time. It's such easy work. Um, I've got the best job today. I, well, I really do. What, and I, I look forward to this every year, so I hope they let us keep, uh, keep on doing it yep. because it's uh, pure fun. Yep, Johnny's going to try to point the camera at uh, stuff out here so we can show you uh, at home what's going on here, kind of get a sense. And of, I wish you could get the exhaust smell and just the, the visceral feel, but we're, we're going to do our very best here. A lot of great cars out already. I just on my way in, you know, I got an early start today, make sure I was on time. And I, uh, you know, just a quick trip from 696 up here, up here to Birmingham. Was, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's beautiful. We're going to do a flip around here and head south on Woodward. Try to get down in the heart of it. You know, we got a perfect yeah. day for this. Oh. Yeah, I'm really thinking, is. do we need the air on or just put the windows down? I think we're just going to leave the windows down today. Just just great. I, you know, we, we hung around. and We, we started this week. Uh, we, there's an event that we're involved in called Corvettes on Woodward. And uh, we have Corvettes that... Uh, come from all over the country to avoid that. It's at the old, I think it's a double tree now, but it's at the Kings Lake. We use their parking lot in the back. It had to be a record turnout because there were so many Corvettes there. But, uh, and it's a charity event. Uh, they collect some money at the beginning of it. And uh, I think it's like 10 bucks or 20 bucks, something like that. And when it's all said and done, then we get an escort down to the food bank that's the recipient of uh, all those donations. But. But it's a show we go to. My wife and I are always there. We see friends and people we get to see once a year in Dream Cruise. So, so how many Corvettes are there? Several hundred. I heard, yeah. I heard something like 400. Uh, I think that's probably was a pretty good number. And the other part that goes with that, you know, we've got that car collection out in Brighton. Right. John, and uh, so we make sure everybody knows that after Corvettes on Woodward on a Wednesday night, they can all come and we just have a general open house at the car collection for everybody to come in and hang out with us. And Could, so. uh, talk just a f for a minute about the car collection and the philanthropic work that you do. That's I, I think that's just absolutely magical. The, the collections probably, I started collecting cars about 20 years ago and, uh, and there's some really unique cars. I've got some interesting taste. Obviously, I love Corvettes. And so we've got one full room of Corvettes, and uh, and there's a, a real variety of cars in there. Some some really great record breaking. I mean, we've got the my company's a performance company. We built performance cars, and it's 50 years old this year. So we've got some iconic cars in the collection, cars we set records with in the past, and we even raced the Blue Angels jet team uh, years ago on the quarter mile for car and driver. That was always fun. But there's so there's a Corvette room. Uh, I grew up in the, I was a teenager in the late 60s, so I like muscle cars. Yeah, me cars. too. So there's a lot of muscle cars, and then the front room's got some exotics in it, and some really special Corvettes, Corvettes that we modified that uh, will get a lot of attention. But, you know, we assembled the collection, and, you know, a lot of collections around the country, there's a lot of collections even bigger than mine. We've probably got about 180 cars in there right now. Um, but a lot of people just keep them private. My wife and I looked at all the great cars, and trying to figure out a way to share them with people and so we tried a couple charity events and our typical model is uh, we get in touch with what we feel is a, a really good charity like the American Cancer Society right. or like Ronald McDonald House or Children's Mott's Hospital and uh, we have uh, we invite people to an open house and they make a donation at the door in any amount uh, whatever they're comfortable with And, uh, and we share uh, we 
share the collection with people and they have a good time. We have a good time. It's it, it is a wonderful collection and it's it's such a great cause when uh, when you do open that up and uh, people can come out and it's just I, I know we were talking earlier about the April twenty second event which I was lucky enough to go to and how many people did you say showed up? Yeah, well, I, I, it, it was shocking, but <laughs> right uh, and completely unexpected. But when you do an open house and you know people just show up, we had three thousand people 3, show up. And uh, it was not the nicest day in the world. It was uh, not. You know, we the theme of that is, to, you know, it's in the spring, so you're supposed to be getting your car out and getting an opportunity to get it on the road for the first time and all the cars that sat in the garage through the winter. But uh, but uh, we got great TV coverage. We got great radio coverage. And the American Cancer Society is an amazing charity. And uh, we collected uh, $60,000 in six hours. Even though people had to wait to get in a little bit, they uh, everybody had a good time. Um, everybody's very gracious, and it was a fun, fun day. So I love it. And thank you for coming, by the way. Oh, it was great! It was yeah. great. I, I took a couple friends with me, and uh, they were. You know, you just can't wait to get them in there. When you walk in the first time, it's you're you're just absolutely blown away by uh, by just the sheer number of of just wonderful cars. And you're a great host, just a, a fantastic host. Thank you very much. I, I, I mean, love it. You get, you, it's really interesting how enthusiasts get wrapped up in this. And, you know, it's a day like today, we can really see it right in front of your eyes. Uh, in fact, it's been this way every night, I don't know, six weeks ago. I right. had their lawn chairs out and started... Uh, started enjoying uh, Dream Cruise even a little bit early, but uh, it, it's worked out real well. Um, you know, we did 60 events at the collection in uh, 2019, uh, uh, and uh, then, uh, then COVID hit, and uh, oh, nice. um, you know, everything had shut down. So we started to loan some cars out to different museums around the country that were a little better prepared to stay open during COVID, and uh, that was that was a new experience for us. But uh, we got we did uh, zero in 2020, a couple for a couple of real sick little kids that we needed to get done for timing standpoint. And then uh, 22, we did about 10. And uh, in 23, we're back on a roll. We're not gonna do 60, but I'll bet we'll do 30 before the end of the year. And, uh, and not all of them are big ones, like the American Cancer Society. Right. And, uh, we have meetings, companies, uh, you know, rent the facility, don't rent it, they make a donation to our foundation for it, but uh, they use the facility for meetings and things of that nature, and so it works real well. So It's perfect. Yep, and it's it's a lot of fun. We get to see people once a year at a lot of the different events. That's the General Lee behind us uh, on your side. Here, oh yeah, there he is, okay. Sitting in my mirror now, I see it. Right. <laughs> You'll recognize that horn everywhere, right? Right, exactly. So. And look at all these things parked on the side here. Just absolutely spectacular. Well, I mean, it's really in the swing of things, too. I don't know that there's a place on the side of the road here where you've even left the park at this stage. But, but I, you know, I hope this continues. It, it sure seems like it's building up steam, and uh, I think it's going to continue and keep going for who knows how long. You know, you talk to people outside of uh, the metro area here, and we, we deal with a lot of folks in Cincinnati, and they're, so this, this Dream Cruise, how many boats are in that? <laughs> oh, yeah, how about that? Well, yeah. not, not, not quite what that means. No. Well, it's a, it's a fun time, and uh, like I said, enthusiasts are always just completely enchanted with the fact that this is even going on, so... We spent yesterday out at M1, and you know I'm a Corvette guy, John. I do. So I, uh, as a kid, I saw my first split window Corvette when I was 10, and it was already a car guy, but this turned me into a Corvette guy for life. And um, so as a result, uh, we had 70 years, you know, this is Corvette's birthday, 70 years of Corvette this year. And uh, so we had, M1 gathered all of the years, and we had an example from every year, all through, all 70 cars, in at M1 to celebrate Corvette. Really 
kind of an epic event because it'll probably never happen again. And what a good time we had. Um, obviously, it was cool for me because I'm a Corvette guy. Was right, a, right. A bunch of Corvette people, but uh, what a what an amazing thing it was to see all 70 years. And it will probably never happen again, so pretty cool. We had two cars in it. We had a 55 that I have in the collection that's uh, it's, uh, in really, really good shape. And then my 2020 was the year they needed, so, but... I kept wondering, you know, the whole time when you arrange something like that, you have to hope that everybody shows up right. to right. get it done. <laughs> and I kept thinking, you know, what if somebody has a problem? And sure enough, at the last minute, one car that was coming you know, just hit an animal of some kind. Ah. Everybody got on the phone and found somebody with the right gear, and he showed up, and oh. we got it done. So... But it was a great day. They had a lot of attendance out there. Uh, you know, M1 the track, the mm -hmm. condominium garage track at the end of Woodward Avenue. Today they're going to be cruising and uh, they're doing a parade at, the, at downtown Pontiac, which will be pretty good. And uh, we've got our display out there uh, showing off a few of our performance cars. So, anyway. Is that all about and then so, when you come close to it you know they they, they were building cars in uh, Australia and it's basically a Holden Holden right Holden had a GM Australia brand yeah, exactly and uh, and they love their muscle cars in Australia mm -hmm. I mean it's a it's a really big deal and so Pontiac uh, they use the Pontiac brand and it's a little different body style but um, they started importing them into this country and they went over very, very well. Uh, unfortunately, as things go and as things change, they have slowly de needed or decided to wind out of production down in Australia. So, so the GA went away. Yeah. Uh, it was such a good car, though, that they decided to um, uh, continue on with another year or two. And the last years were, that's where they built the GTO. Right. GTO that they did. Uh, they used uh, LS3s in them, so they were very powerful. Um, and so the cars that people bought and are over here really kind of held their value very well. Uh, we've had a couple of them. They also built the Chevy SS, which was uh, when Pontiac went out. Right. Uh, they had to have something to call that car, and so it became the Chevy SS. And it, they are the coolest grocery getters. Ford had a little sedan, <laughs> but look good, lots of power. We did a lot of uh, engine upgrades on those for people. Superchargers and heads and cam and things of that nature. And uh, they're fun cars. That silver one we were just looking right, at. Right, right. You could tell it sounded pretty good. It, it did. It sounded very, very good. Yeah. This uh, Apache on our right, this pickup truck, I, I've always kind of had a, a, a thing for pickups. Um, I, I don't know why, but I do. And I, yeah, that's... And, and, you know, there are a lot of people that do. They're a big deal. Um, this one's a, an older one, but uh, the square body uh, trucks that GM built and Ford uh, back in the day, they're very popular. You know, some of the better auctions you go to. I mean, I make sure I get to the Barrett-Jackson auction up in Scottsdale every year in January. And it absolutely amazes me what these cars bring, what these trucks bring. And they're... You know, they're very uh, adaptable to a lot of different things. You know, obviously, you can give them more power and upgrade them. This one's kind of a combination of, uh, uh, I guess, restoration and, uh, and also some additional power you can build. So, I, I hear a pretty powerful engine. Yeah. Really you see this thing in front of us? This yeah. Car? And can you see the scoop? Yes. Just sticking out of the yep. hood? Oh my gosh. That's like a... I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> it's got to be like a 59 or 60. Uh, four uh, grayish individuals in the car having a good mm -hmm. time. <laughs> but that is one heck of a motor underneath there. 
you know he wants to. He's got some space in front of him, but over to the left, there's an officer. So yeah, he better take it easy. Maybe that's uh, keeping him throttled back. Yeah, he's got to be. Uh, so coming up on our left, there's a uh, a Corvette. So you know the new Corvette is. I mean, I we're enchanted with them. Right. Uh, you know, they came out in 2020, and. It, it's it's an uh, it's an amazing engineering feat. They uh, come with 495 horsepower right from the factory. It's mid-engine. Everything's electronic now. So steering, brakes. There's no manual. There's no manual cars anymore. But uh, I have to tell you, it is by far the best bang for the buck anybody could ever get. Uh, I think mine was 86,000 or something. It took us a while to find out how to get some more performance out of the motor because all the uh, the engine management system we talked about last year, it's right. completely encrypted. And uh, so our first performance package adds about 100 horsepower. And we basically found a way to convince the management system that there was nothing going on back in the engine pack. <laughs> and so that's how we got away with getting another 100 horsepower. But we really wanted to supercharge it. so. We spent a couple years trying to figure out how to get that done, and in fact, we did have to go into the management system at some point in order to make that work. But uh, our latest and greatest product is uh, a C8 Corvette with a Magnuson supercharger that makes 710 horsepower. What about packaging under the hood? Is there enough uh, room and real estate under there to well, it's shoehorn tight. some stuff in? Yeah, it's tight. And uh, but the thing is, that's why we needed a partner like Magnuson because right. they basically had to redesign the supercharger that we were going to use and it had to, you know, wasn't as tall and, mm -hmm. uh, but it gets the job done. Uh, we run it at pretty low boost, but, uh, like I said, 710 horsepower and, you know, uh, us real car guys, we like the whine of the superchargers. The right, car, right, right, right. Gosh, it sounds so <laughs> good. It really does. We drive that car into a show and people, you know, they, they've been told long enough now you can't do anything with the engine and so... And really, we haven't done anything with the engine. We haven't done anything with the internals since, you know, it's not a different cam, not different pistons or anything else. But uh, but it's raw horsepower and lots and lots of fun to drive. Having said that, it's a great car right out of the box, even with 495 horsepower. And, uh, that you can use to drive uh, as an everyday driver, daily driver. to work, grocery yep. store. My, my white C8, now we got the, the entry level performance package on it, so it makes about 600 horsepower. I got 40,000 miles on it. <laughs> and we can drive it anywhere, uh, which really makes a big difference as well. So we're having a blast with it. And uh, again, they can't build it fast enough. Right. Every one they build is out there. Uh, I mm. was shocked at the number of C8 Corvettes that were at uh, Corvettes on Woodward the other night. But, I, what I'm really looking forward to, John, is you know the, how much I enjoy performance cars. So in right. the past, you know, we get winter here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so I've made it a habit to look for a 911, either a turbo Porsche or a 4S all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And I put snow tires on it, and that's my winter fun car because I can drive it right through the winter. This year, uh, maybe you've heard GM is building a Corvette called the E-Ray. And the E-Ray has got an electric motor in the front. And um, it's not a plug-in. It's uh, somewhat of a hybrid. And uh, this electric motor uh, allows this car to have well over 600, I think it's 670 horsepower. And it's all-wheel drive. So this year, I'm going to get an E-Ray. I love that. And I'm going to put snow tires on it. And that's <laughs> going to be my winter driver. So it's an amazing car. I, a lot of people have confused the fact. They think they've heard a little bit about an electric Corvette. And it's not an electric Corvette. It's got an electric motor in the front. Uh, the torque, from what I've heard, I haven't driven one. They're not actually available to the public yet. But uh, the torque in electric cars is that's the one thing, one real good thing I can say about it. Uh, it's amazing, and so this car scampers down the drag strip uh, really, really fast. Well, I was in my first Tesla ever. Um, How'd that go? Two days ago, three days ago. Um, 
it was um, eye-opening. You know, as long as you've got that on-off switch in the on position, it just pulls. Just keeps going. I had, uh, so I, w I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, were you driving it or were you riding No, 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 no. I, um, I wasn't allowed to drive it, which, you know, that there's something wrong with that. But uh, So one of the things that's kind of unique with that, too, is when you lift off the gas. Right. This has this regeneration that slows the car down. And that's what the E-Ray will have as well. Yeah, and the brakes are kind of superfluous almost, unless you're in definitely stop-and-go traffic. Exactly. And uh, so as a result, you know, um, you really, I mean, you can roll right up to the light. By the time you're at the light, you're usually at a stop, and you're right. You just have to tap the brakes to, to make a stop. But but again, the torque from right. an electric motor is pretty incredible. I finally did drive a Tesla out in California, and... Uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, this one had the ludicrous button. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to a place where there was a road that was not really, there wasn't any danger. And people letting me drive it asked me to get the ludicrous button, and I did. And I have to admit, I cracked a smile. It was, <laughs> it was uh, quite an experience. So. Well, I think we're going to flip around here and uh, head back north just because I think we can. Why wouldn't we do that? Well, as you can see, you know, it's just like every every dream cruise. There's not an empty space along no. the along Woodward. I'm looking uh, forward to taking a drive late in the day. We always end the day on dream cruise after the activities and do a little cruising ourselves. I'm fortunate that my wife is as addicted to this stuff as I am. So. <laughs> well, she's a little uh, racer, right? She Not is, so little. Uh, yeah, she's <laughs> racing Corvettes. She was uh, Rookie of the Year last year with NCCC, and she is uh, racing with SCCA. And uh, actually, tomorrow she's going to be racing out on some property Schoolcraft College has, and uh, they're setting up an off a uh, autocross course, and she'll be out there having fun. So I I don't do much racing anymore. Right. But I'm right by her side there, helping her, encouraging her, and uh, we we did we did just get a new Z06 Z07, which is the kind of the race car version of it. And we both got one. She got a black one. I got a white one. And uh, she took it out to Gingerman, which is a track on the west side of the state in South Haven. And uh, first time out, she brought back a couple of trophies. So she's <laughs> I, uh, she's having a lot of fun, and I'm 100 percent behind her. Uh, getting that done, so it'll all be in Corvette so I can almost promise you that. But. Well, I thought we'd pull over here in the right lane and just take a look at stuff that's uh, parked on the sides. Just oh, there's a wagon. You're you're kind of a wagon guy. Yeah, we've got a Vista Cruiser wagon in the uh, collection that uh, has always gotten a lot of attention. I always wanted my parents to get a Vista Cruiser when I was a kid. They never did. So, this is a 72 Vista Cruiser. That's the one with the glass on the top, you know, and the kind of the Action. bubble on the back. And so, as a result, um, I got our guys together. And we said, what if, what if they would have built a 442 <laughs> Vista Cruiser? So, we bought a hood that had the scoops on it like the 442 mm -hmm. and changed the transmission to a manual. It's a four-speed and put in an LS3 and put a blower on it. And, <laughs> Well, of Put course. Some nice wheels and tires on it, and uh, it's been all over the country. It shows. And we did a car crazy show with Barry McGuire with it, and uh, it's been at uh, you know racetracks being shown out front. We actually raced it in the Ultimate Street Car Challenge, and uh, surprisingly enough, it did really well. Um, but uh, but we had a lot of fun with it. Actually, I think uh, I think we loaned it to Channel Seven in the early days. Did. And I think it was. Uh, one of the dream cruise props so well anytime you need to loan a car out i think i think johnny and i'd be open to <laughs> you know well you guys are coming out to tour here in a couple of weeks so we are yeah so we'll get a chance you i'm expecting maybe you'll be asking me for something more next year we'll see <laughs> but uh, but the vista cruiser wagon is cool it always gets a lot of attention we have a lot of fun with it so it makes all the good car guy noises too so that helps 
Wagons are cool though. They really are. Yep. And yeah, I, I've always I've always had a soft spot. Frankly, I think it's because a lot of us were a lot younger than those right. days, and our parents had them. I, can you imagine today though? You remember the, when they used to put the seat facing the other way? Yes. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, uh, how unsafe. <laughs> How, how I remember driving, that? going with my aunt and my uncle. We were uh, in a, in a, um, a Catalina, I think, or a, I forget what it was, but it was a wagon. And my cousin Ken, uh, I was younger, he took my shoes and threw them out the back window because, of course, the back window was wide open. Well, you know, the famous wagon that GM built was they called the Nomad Wagon. Right. It was a two-door station wagon and those are those, those will always be in demand i don't remember what years it was like starting in 55 i think they built them to maybe 1960 or something um it wasn't a long run but boy you see those at car shows all the time yeah. and it you know major auctions and uh and most of them have been saved and redone and they're, they're very very fun it's for gts you know, I did finally get a Ford GT. I did you? Yeah. I didn't really think I was going to be on Ford's list because I'm such a Chevy guy. Right. They offered one to me, and uh, I ordered it. It's uh, They called it, a, I think, a carbon edition. It had a couple of carbon mm -hmm. stripes down the center of it. Shipped it out to a friend's place out in Arizona where we get a chance to drive it here around. And uh, they're very cool. I, I was a little concerned about the six-cylinder motor. You know, I'm, I'm a V8 guy. Right. And, uh, but, I mean, this thing's got a lot of power, and it just flies. So it doesn't really matter not having two extra cylinders, I guess. But, but so, they're, they're cool. So back to your collection. Pretty much every car that you've got there is drivable, right? Yeah, yeah. There isn't any. I mean, there's some you're not right. going to, but Yeah, I obviously. mean, you've got to be concerned about the value of some of them. Some of the Ferraris are worth a lot of money. Right. And if they ever got damaged or if there was a paint chip even in them. And mm -hmm. When you start doing paint work to a Ferrari, you you really lose a lot of value in it. But, uh, but you know, I've, I've been lately I've been very focused on trying to buy cars that I'm going to get a chance to drive. Not just pieces uh, that people come and look at. And, uh, and, and, you know, as the older I get, the more I want to spend some time on cars that, you know, are really significant. So... So what's, what's next on your list? We have an A12 Competizione uh, Ferrari coming. And it's they're a very limited number. It'll be the highest horsepower, naturally aspirated uh, Ferrari they're going to build. And that, that'll be it after that. Uh, you know, they're going to be converting, you know, I haven't heard their plan, but it'll, it won't be quite as... Uh, quite as horsepower as it was before so so that seemed like a really good one to have um, Ferraris are a lot of fun to drive or a lot of money and so but uh, but we're gonna be looking at uh, a lot of the new Corvettes that are coming on I mean I I think when they engineered this C8 Corvette they had everything in mind they were thinking how are we going to do like the E-Ray or how are we going to build racing versions or, it is, I would encourage you, if you have never tried one, to try one out because they're in truly enchanting cars, the way they handle it and everything else. So we'll continue to do those. We'll continue to add Corvettes, older ones, uh, to the collection. You may remember, John, we have Zora Duntoff, who's considered to be the, I guess, the father of Corvette. He's right. the German that came over that got hired at GM and was determined to make Corvette a race car and uh, we have his mule car it's uh, the car he decided to uh, try things on many people say it was the first V8 Corvette I'm not sure if that's right it's a 1955 and uh, so it's it's been in demand we during COVID we loaned it out to a couple of museums it went out to the Rodin Museum out in Newport Rhode Island and spend a little time at the Gilmore and it's uh, right now at the Corvette Museum while they celebrate 70th. I was going to say the 70th year, yeah. yeah. So it's hard not to have it around but really unique looking car. Uh, but Zora, I mean he, without him being involved in Corvette, I'm not sure what we have today. 
he uh, he really really did focus that car into racing and it was always his dream that it become a mid-engine car and I believe that's why we have a mid-engine Corvette today so why'd they take so long well you know I'll tell you it's it's a very affordable car too mm-hmm. um, you can you can look at a lot of the exotics, the McLarens and the Ferraris and right. Lamborghinis and things like that. And in many cases, you can buy four Corvettes for what you might pay for a Ferrari or something like that. And so, I think Corvette has always been a very affordable sports car, a very affordable performance car. And uh, when you change the architecture to put the engine in the back or in the middle. That's a pretty big, uh, pretty big challenge, mm. and do it affordably. So, so yeah. A couple seconds ago, or, or minutes ago, a, a tornado went by. I don't know if you saw. There was. Uh, I, they uh, speaking of front wheel drive and yeah. you know unusual they, architecture. They hold a special place in my heart. My yeah. dad ran a Fisher Body Plant in Cupid, Ohio. Years mm. ago. It's probably why I'm a car guy today. And they built the old Tornado back in 1966. That was the first one in his factory. So, Fisher Body would build that car up to the firewall and then it'd be shipped off to another GM plant to get the engine and drivetrain. So, there's two of them in the collection. You'll see them when you come on in a couple of weeks. So, those are a lot of fun as well. And they're iconic. Yeah. Really Absolutely. First front wheel drive car like that. Just. Yeah, there's really no quite, there's no looking at it and going, oh, is that a Plymouth? Or you, you know exactly yeah, what you know, it is when you see that vehicle. You know, Jay Leno, the ultimate car guy, he's, right. he's got one. We helped build it with GM Performance years ago. Gave a 1,000 horsepower. Uh, we changed that one from front-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive, but he often says it's one of his favorite cars, so that's kind of fun. Now, has Jay been to your uh, collection? He's not. I've been to his right. show with him uh, a few years ago uh, with a Grand Sport replica that we built with uh, Superformance. And uh, I have to tell you, he's the nicest, warmest, right. coolest car guy you'd ever want to meet. He's just uh, a joy to be around from the time you meet him to the time you leave him. So uh, I expect he'll be there at some point. You know, we've talked about some of the cars in the collection, but he's a pretty busy guy. So, mm. you know, John, this. This Dream Cruise has been as good, if not better, than everyone. I mean, there are some great cars out here. Well, weather is, has uh, certainly been in our favor today. That's that's for sure. But, you know, I'm just looking at the sheer number of people just sitting on the side. You know, it's there's it's a million-person event. And it sure looks like that today. They're all here. Well, it truly is a perfect day for it. What is Absolutely. that next to you? Um, I, I, I think it's more a uh, Polaris. I, okay. I'm not ent- entirely certain. Let's see the half, top half of it. You see that old Ford wagon up there? Chrysler started that. They, they had a drag vehicle they called the Hemi under glass. It just did wheel stands all the way down. And then Ford came out with one, and Chevy came out with one. Those are popular in the collector uh, collector scene. And that uh, Camaro that's clear next year. Yes. Yeah, he's got some pretty heavy horses on the foot. Yeah, it's uh, got a little burble. So here comes this. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's what that is. Yamaha. Yamaha, but it's, yeah, off road. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal, too, these days. It is. I mean, they've got an off road track up by Fenton, I guess. And those guys have a lot of fun. You know, you remember we were building the uh, Colorados and the uh, Canyons. Right. They had that V6 engine in it. We found a way to supercharge that. So we helped a couple of customers in the beginning get over 500 horsepower with those. And uh, we had quite a run with them. They've changed the motor in it now. It's the new ones. You get a four-cylinder engine, twin turbo, and that's a good solution for it. But... Uh, but that V6 with 500 horsepower in that truck is right. a lot of fun. And it's a good looking truck too. So. 
I'm just a bit sad that Camaro's going away. I, I, it's it's. Uh, I hope it's not an end of the entire Camaro line. They, they bring something back. That's they've been kind of quiet about it, but yeah. you know they. I think for sure it's going to come back something different, maybe. But you know they ended it once before and they brought it back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> They uh, stopped building them in, in the 2000s, and then they brought the Gen 5 Camaro back in 2010, I think it was. And uh, it's had a, it's had a good run. They're fun cars. Well, I think they're really, really good looking as well. They started rebuilding the um, old cars. They did the Z28s, and then they did they did some Copos. Most of those were for drag racing. They built 69 of those a year. And guys would go out and drag race those. Then the Z01, uh, we had an opportunity to get all of them and test them and have fun with them and race them. And they were a blast. I got a little too, little too cocky with one back in, in 2010 when they brought them out. I uh, decided to take one out to Teacherman, which is a racetrack mm-hmm. on the west side of the state. And, you know, the car's kind of big. It was a little bulky, and I wasn't quite sure how well it would do on the track. And so I made a couple spins around the track. It felt really good, so I started pushing it. And I pushed it and pushed it a little bit more, and oh, I was having so much fun. And it just never seemed to give an inch. I mean, it was perfect, real, real fun uh, track car. I finally pushed it to a point where maybe I took it just a little (laughs) too far. And uh, I think I probably hold the record out at uh, Gingerman for the longest off-road excursion out there they've ever had. I mean, that thing, that spun around so many times. Never didn't damage the car, you know, didn't. But it did uh, collect a lot of mud underneath it and (laughs) and quite a bit of embarrassment. I was going to say... (laughs) I think the amount of money collected was uh, yeah. probably significantly less than the I, amount of embarrassment. I was hearing <laughs> guys with even at, you know didn't recognize me after it was all over. Hey, did you see Lincoln over there? <laughs> Left the track. Look at what he did out there. You know. <laughs> oh well. But it was it was really actually a very fun track car. It really was, and uh, that's why I think they got the long run they did of it. So. Of course, we turned a few of them into Firebirds too. You know, they right, right. Ended, so we decided that uh, since GM wasn't going to build them, we were going to. So I built several of those. We got a design team, made some molds, and changed the front end, changed the back end, and put the screaming chicken on the hood. And, <laughs> and uh, what a blast that was! I kept a couple for the collection. So we never intended to build them as uh, production cars. Right. But um, we did uh, have a big customer in the Middle East that decided he wanted one for each one of his kids, so we built 10 of them for them. And there's still some floating around the country. I think we built probably 40 or 50 of them by the time it was done. So do you get any unusual requests or things that you... uh, I don't think that's a wise idea, putting 1,200 horsepower in it. Yeah, all the time. (laughs) You know, we usually start with a customer when they want us to get more horsepower, do something. We're trying to talk talk to them about what they want to do. Do you want to autocross this car? Do you want to drag race? Do you want to road race? Do you want to go to car shows and lift the hood and beat on your chest? You know, right. <laughs> it's, they come up with a lot of different ideas. And, uh, and most of the things we can handle. But when you get into um, a car that's got a lot of miles on it, 80,000 miles, 70, it's... It's time if you're going to try to get more power to kind of rebuild the whole thing or maybe swap the motor out because by the time we give them more horsepower, there's something that's going to break. And uh, I don't want anything out there that we did that's going to leave anybody stranded. So, yeah. But but it happens all the time. And, you know, there are a lot of people that think they can design a supercar and uh, they'd like the benefit of our brand to have something under the hood. and. I don't think people really understand how much is really involved. And uh, we had some guy, some guy come in a couple years ago, and he had a great plan, beautiful car, and didn't really understand he was going to have to crash test it oh. if he was going to build it. I think we kind of broke his bubble. Oh. 
uh, you know, there are some you can build in a small enough quantity where you don't really have to go through everything, but this guy had big, big, big ideas. So. But we're, we're still having fun. Uh, we showed off some cars last year at the Detroit Auto Show. Uh, we got an opportunity and got several cars invited. We had some fun. So, how are you? <laughs> Hope you're having fun. I think we've been spotted. Yeah. Well, I remember that uh, the Jeep that we used to drive around in was the weather. Right. You know, everybody People kept asking, asking us. us a right. Coming. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. That's one thing I just saw a uh, Corvette with Lamborghini type doors. Uh, we've got a shop just down the street that we own. It's called Lingenfelder Auto Spa, and it does some accessory work. We've got, I think we've done like 30 C8 Corvettes where we change the doors to no the kidding. Lamborghini style where they open up. How you guys doing? And uh, how much fun is that, you know? That's the one thing about Corvette, I think, is that everybody individualizes their cars. Everybody's got a little different idea about what they want to do, whether it's paint or motor or interior or lots and lots of carbon fiber. That's the way that goes. How are you? <laughs> well, traffic has certainly picked up. We're getting a lot of attention all of a sudden. Look at these big Lincolns here, John. Yes. There were a couple of 59 Cadillacs out at the M1 yesterday. Those cars are so big. Uh, I mean, it'd stick, a third of them would stick out of a garage in today's world. And uh, those are great cars. Hi, guys. How are you? Yeah, my sister had a 72 uh, Lincoln Continental, black on black on black. And I, I took that car to prom, and it was... It was a great, fun car. Well, I'll bet you yeah. got a lot of attention to that. Now, that's a unique vehicle, at least to me. It's right. Like a scooter with... It's got all the stuff. Now, there's a little Ford RS. I know we're... You had one, didn't you? Or do you still have we it? did. No, I don't have it anymore. Okay. We did. It's Focus RS. They were all-wheel drive. Really powerful for for the car itself. A lot of fun. Mine was a manual and had a good good time with it. Very very stiff suspension. I remember feeling just about every crack in the road <laughs> that you drive over. And, uh, like driving a dishwasher down the road. There, and, you know, I so and I'm sure the younger people just have no problem with that at all. Right. At my age, I don't need to fill every <laughs> crack in the pavement, and so. But we had a lot of fun with it, and. Uh, I never did get a chance to track it. I think if I would have, I probably would have kept it forever because I'm told it was really fast on the track. But we still got a lot of very cool cars on the on the horizon, though. I mean, that McLaren has become a really, really cool builder of cars out of England, mm -hmm. and uh, there's, they've got dealers in this country. Lamborghini's got a really good lineup coming up this year. Should be a lot of fun. We we went to our 47th Indy 500 in a row this year, and uh, I probably mentioned that to you last year. But what what an incredible race that is! It's such a bucket list thing to do. We well, I need to do that. Yet. That's for sure. I think that's. Uh... Went to the that's Detroit Grand Prix this year. Yes. Downtown. Chevrolet had a nice hospitality suite above one of the parking garages. And so we got a good venue to watch all the cars and run around the track. And so that was fun. Really good time. Barrett Jackson, Scottsdale. Great event. Meekum auctions all over the country. Also great events. And he bring a trailer finds? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you remember, I start the day every day. Right. For the Starbucks and bring a trailer. Bringatrailer.com. 
whoever has a taken a look at that website do so because it's it's an amazing site uh, yeah we bought and sold I think mm -hmm. we probably sold about 15 cars there this heavy year. really and wow we bought a few as well um, it's 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 really been kind of a phenomenal they 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 have got about a hundred cars that are selling per day not everyone sells obviously but uh, most of them do and if you want to reach the market with your car that's the way to do it there's a fan Finally. Yeah. Bringatrailer.com. Hemmings has got a site now mm -hmm. as well. Um, Cars and Bids is another one. But uh, but the big dog is Bringatrailer.com. You know, if I thought that this was ever going to be anything back when uh, I was a lot younger, I would have held on to all of, all of those old cars. And it doesn't seem like it, it, it matters what you had back then. There, you see them out here on Woodward. You know, an old Ford Escort. Like, what's yeah, sure. what's the point? You yeah, know, this but Le Mans here. It's just pulling out gorgeous. Front of us. <clears throat> Le Mans convertible, beautiful. Yeah, I have to tell you though, too. I'm I'm, I'm finally get a point where I'm spoiled. I really enjoy the safety features, <laughs> the dependability. You know, the car. I'm, I'm doing an interview later. With, uh, right. With you folks, and it's with a car that I brought out. It's a 07 Z06. Um, it's rebodied to look like a '67. Um, has all the looks of the old car, but lots and lots of power. You know, great tires, great mm. brakes. Air conditioning works all the time. You're not smelling fuel in the car. <laughs> It'll spoil you, but it's also a way to appreciate the past. But I'm, I don't, maybe again, that's something that happens with age, but I really do. The cars today are so good. Look at this hot rod here. Yeah. The flames on the past. Yeah, the paint the uh, work on that is. I couldn't tell you what that was. Believe it or not, I can't hit it. It's at a Nash. Oh, I would have it's not gotten that. has been gone a long time. I've got a couple of hot rods in the in the car collection. I haven't driven them very often, but uh, but they've got their following too. Mm-hmm. It's funny we've got a '69 BW in the collection, and uh, I bought it as a charity deal at one of the auctions, and it's not perfect it's got some a little bit of rust on it paint the attention that car gets is amazing no kidding it just people walk by some of the better cars in the collection to go see that old bw <laughs> and, and we have a chevette in the collection as well it gets the same kind of attention um, this one's only got four thousand miles on it but and the reason it gets attention is everybody knew somebody that had one right or that was their first car or that's what they got back and forth to college in. And Do you have a gremlin? We have, I think, one of the coolest gremlins you can have. It's a, it's a V8. There were only 100 of the ones like I have built. But it has the Levi interior. So it's a Levi gremlin. And uh, when we have people in, and I show them the Levi pockets, you know, right. the doors, and the Levi material on the... And that was from seats. the factory. It was, yeah. That was a Levi option. Mm -hmm. So we did a show with uh, Supercar Blondie. She came in, and uh, for those who know, she's a uh, very, very popular uh, influencer on social media. And we did a show in a ZR1 Corvette, but we went around through the collection and looked at a lot of cars and did a lot of filming. She absolutely fell in love with that Levi Gremlin. No kidding. She just couldn't believe the <laughs> Levi on the seats. See? And, and uh, by the way, you know. you got a Bugatti. You've got a bunch of Ferraris. And oh yeah. my gosh, a, a Gremlin. A Gremlin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or a Chevette. Or, or a Volkswagen Bug. So I, I've had more than one person come up and put their arm around me and ask if I was smoking something. <laughs> like I bought a certain car if I had 
too many brewskis and uh, but it's all part it's all part of the hobby it's part yep. of the fun um, and I, I appreciate that and I appreciate that but and I just bought cars that made an impression of me over over the years and uh, it's so much fun to share them so you know, as we're driving here, I'm, I'm watching, you know, some of these other cars pass by, and I'm looking at the license tags. You know, Ontario, Florida, California, uh, saw Nevada earlier. Right. They're, they're all over the place. Indiana, uh, right next to us. Uh, this, this dream this, cruise is just something that has been created. That drags them in. Go on and on and on. Well, I know there was a contingent of uh, guys that used to drive out from California. Um, in Camaros and Firebirds, I believe it was. Is that right? Yeah, Is it? That's exactly right. Sure. We had a unique experience probably about four weeks ago. I didn't even realize this club existed, but there's a National Fiero Club, <laughs> and they decided. To really? Have, yeah, they decided to have their convention this year in Auburn Hills, and they called us up. They wanted to bring their group crew collection. And I'm sure, you know, you guys can come. Thinking maybe there's going to be forty or fifty cars. Right. They had 450 cars, <laughs> and they showed up at the collection. We had a blast with them. They no were kidding. So much fun. Great people. Lots and lots and lots of fun. Um, and then they held their convention at the in Auburn Hills at uh, Marriott out there. Mm -hmm. And so I went out. I having had them stop by. I got to know a lot of the people that were there. Actually, I have one Fiero in the collection that I bought from a guy in New Jersey. Uh, He's referred to as Fierro John, and Fierro John is the expert in the country, and uh, he's got that nice, real good Jersey accent, and fun to talk. Kind of to. a niche kind of guy. Yeah, <laughs> but Jeez. Uh, he was part of the group. But I went out to Auburn Hills on the Sunday when they had their their uh, kind of conclusion of their uh, their convention, and there truly were 450 Fieros out there, and. It was fun. It really was. And these people really enjoyed their cars. And, you know, some in regular condition, some in really, really great condition. Uh, but I didn't realize there were that many people interested in Honey uh, and Fieros. You know, the further we get down here, the more the crowd gets. Yep. The bigger they are. Yeah, we're kind of getting down on the heart of it. We're coming up on Dugan's, and uh, this is... Really, kind of the guts of it here. Everybody's got easy ups. Very good. Yeah, I'd kind of like to have that franchise today. Yeah, rent kidding. those, uh, yeah. rent a tent. Mm. This is an amazing crowd. You know, I, and one thing I'm kind of glad I haven't seen yet is anybody doing a burnout. No, no, I'm, I'm actually shocked. I am too. <laughs> I mean, I, but you know, it's it's extremely dangerous. No kit. Well, you don't think it is, but yeah, I mean, you really do lose control. Yep. The uh, Saint Ignace show has got kind of a rep for that. It, it's a big, big, big car show. My wife Kristen and I were what they called the special guests that they uh, had out there last year, and so they kind of took some nice care of us and helped us show up our products a little bit. Having said that, um, there were a lot of people doing burnouts. And uh, it's not the safest thing in the world to do, that's for sure. But. Well, there is a lot of horsepower out here this year, and um, we're winding up on an hour here, sadly. To I went by fast, this, John. No, too fast. Yeah. Went, went by too fast. And uh, if you're out there and you're not a haven't been down to Woodward, you need to come on down. Just just get the experience. It's it's there's nothing like this anywhere else in the country, I'm fairly certain. I am certain. With all the events we go to and so on and so forth, I've never seen anything quite like this before. Well if you stayed with us for the full hour, um, you need to find a better use of your time. But we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, we really enjoyed it. Ken Ken Leonfelter and uh, Johnny Sarton. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I'm not sure when they're going to cut us off, so we'll just keep talking and we, we'll keep driving. All right. right. Well, let's keep doing this, okay? This Absolutely. Yeah, as long as they'll let us. Yeah, I look forward to this every year. I really do.
every make and model out here. So. No kidding, right? It's everything that you could possibly want. You know, back in the, the 70s when, you know, I was bringing my dad's truck out here to uh, race up and down Woodward, which I don't think he knew about, but uh, would have been proud of, I'm sure. I, I never envisioned that this is what this was going to be like. No, I didn't either. Well, yeah. I mean, I would have called you crazy if you said that's what's going to happen. I, uh, I did a fair amount of, well, let's just say misbehaved on Woodward <laughs> and also Telegraph Road. For those were the two that were really very popular for drive-in uh, restaurants and things of that nature and uh, had a lot of fun. I know my wife talks about she and her girlfriends would come down here with the old Suzy Q restaurant, which is now gone, but all of those things, they would come down and she learned to go up to some, you know, some, you know, guys that they thought were worthy of their time. And she's go up and, does that have a six pack on it? And, <laughs> oh, these girls know about cars. Yeah, sure. <laughs> she was always a good icebreaker. Well, I think they have no problem with attendance this year. No, there is, there is not at all. Not a spot to be found on Woodward on either side. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing that's kind of fun is I see a lot of people have brought their kids. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a little faith that the kids are going to get excited about cars. And yep. Maybe not as much as we did, but um, we've got to keep this thing going. Well, you know, we, when we were young, you kind of had to be a gearhead. Regardless of whether you had a, a four-cylinder in your car and it was just right from the factory that way, you had to know how to fix it. And you had to fix it because things would break and wear out. And I don't know that, that there's a lot of that mentality these days. Well, I mean, all our high schools had auto shop classes. Right. I mean, that was one of the things that, you know. GTO? GTO, yeah. I, that was one of the things that really got me. I mean, I'm in there building a motor and right. at 15 years old, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it really kind of predestined me because I had so much fun, enjoyed it. Probably set the stage. I've already car, I was already a car guy, but this just kind of took me to the next level. And, uh, and there's still a, a lot of life in automotive. One of the things, and one of the more fun things I do is I'm a trustee at uh, Northwood University. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and so, I, I mean, my parents would be shocked because I don't have a college education at all. Mm -hmm. And I was not a very good teenager. <laughs> but, uh, but the fact is, uh, it's, it's more an automotive uh, business school. So right. So we've got lots yeah, of Yeah, every car dealer there. in the country yeah. goes there. Exactly. The kids and such. But, um, but there just aren't that many, as many places for young people to learn how to no. tear, tear motors apart, put them back together. They're coming back, believe it or not. I mean, there are some schools that have really gotten good at it, and, I, and there's a need because there's a lot of cars on the road here that people need to be able to fix and take forward. So, but. You know, we t I told you earlier my dad worked for Ford and was a service engineer, and my sister's husband was an auto shop teacher out at uh, Milford High School and Lakeland High School out okay, uh, sure. out that way. And this was before, you know, he knew any of us. Uh -huh. And my dad would donate, um, have Ford Motor uh, donate um, engines and transmissions and, you know, components and shop manuals. Sure. And so you know, he, he said, I'd look at all this stuff and, you know, my last name, K-A-A-K-E. He's like, what is all this cake stuff? What is what does all this mean? What is what? Because you, know, you know he had it written and yeah, sure. Where did all this stuff come from? Well, I, there are some there are some good schools that have done a great job with it, but uh, I, it's very hard for us to find help with certain kinds of things that we're looking for. I mean, to try to get somebody to understand how to change heads, and right? Put in different pistons and. What that does. And why are you changing the heads? Why, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what does the cam do? Right. And we're just passing past diners. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an iconic 
place. Yep. I, I know Steve Pasteiner that owns that yeah. facility. Every Saturday morning, Carter we coffee. Yep, we drive down here. We just live in Berkeley, and we drive through here often, and it's Even in the always. Winter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Even in the winter. It does yeah. not matter. Rain, shine, snow, sleet. May not have quite the quality of cars in the winter, but uh, just a great group for guys, place for guys to get together. And, and I mean, you're seeing cars and coffees all over the country right. now. Very, very popular thing to do. So did you start that, or was that... An idea, no, and it's okay I, if you stole it. I'm all no, right with no, that. No, no, that's okay. We it, it's been going on for a long time. I think it really got kind of started in California. But the thing is that it's it's just something Saturday mornings tend to bring, and yep. a lot of businesses realized it was a good way for them to bring in business too. Mm-hmm. So there are restaurants that do cars and coffees, and, and uh, past diners is you know they sell magazines and diecast cars and yeah. artwork from. Uh, from automobile things and uh, Steve Pastiner is a true car guy right to the core and his son Steve Jr. is the same way uh, but it's just a great place to go we were doing a cars and coffee at one of our facilities up in Wixom we did that for years and then right. when COVID hit we stopped because it was, you weren't supposed to do those kinds of things during COVID and so and we haven't restarted it yet I'd love to do that yeah I've kind of kept an can. eye out for that just to See if you're going to do that again, but yeah, I'd like to get it started again. But it's uh, we're so busy running around the country, attending events, and trying to uh, build our business that it's just not something that we've been able to get back at. And there are plenty of other people that are doing them, so we're going to, right. We're going to their events and uh, enjoying that. So, so you're going out driving uh, today, or what's? Uh... Yeah, well, I've got to go back out to M1. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they've done a pretty successful job building that facility out there. And uh, yesterday was all about Corvette. Um, today, it's, it's a, uh, as I said earlier, uh, a parade in Pontiac and a lot of car people getting together. And so we'll be back out there uh, a little later today. And really the perfect venue for people who really want to come out and enjoy right. uh, the, uh, the Dream Cruise as well. So... I'll see if I can get in front of this uh, Impala here. Hi, guys. Well, Johnny, what'd you think? A lot of fun. Enjoy listening to you guys. <laughs> I, you know, that's one thing I haven't found yet. I'm, I'm going to find a 65 or newer uh, Corvair. I've always oh, loved the design you know, of that thing. The first ones were a little boxy. Yep. But from 65 on to 69 when they built the last one, I just think they're really, really good looking cars. So we went to. Um, uh, Eight, seven, nine, two, nine, How are you? How's it going? Good. You're not out shooting anywhere. Well, we are actually. We're doing a live oh, feed right now. I'm doing a live stream right here, too. So there I'm you go. streaming you and your stream. This is perfect. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. You as well. Take care. We went to a Berkeley Cruise Fest last night, oh, very cool. and uh, my daughter's got a, a, a storefront on, right on 12 miles, so we kind of opened it up, and and uh, so we were sitting there and uh, watching all these great, you know, it's a jury selection, so you know, you're not seeing chunky stuff come through, Sure. but it was, um, uh, there was uh, yeah, Corvair Monza, Corsas, you know, one after another, you know, and it's like, oh, these are so cool. Well, they've got a club, a local yeah. club here, and it's very active. But I just really think it's a good-looking car. And, uh, you know, well, there's I a don't... Divco. You don't see those very often. No, you certainly don't. And there have been a lot of people trying to duplicate that roof line on that, uh, that 69 uh, yeah. Corvair. I don't know that they've been successful, but... But there'll be one in the Lingenfelder collection at some point. I'm just going to find the exact one. And I'll know, uh, know I found it when I see it. I see Chevrolet's back in their old location, too. I've got to get over there and visit with them. All right, Johnny, lunchtime.
it's always bad form to run people over, yeah, especially in a station work. vehicle. Yeah. Frowned upon. That may not be the best thing. No. Hmm. Well, once again, this was a lot of fun. Oh, I loved it. Thank you.